Howdy, y'all. It's Ryan from Arnie Music, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop music lesson studio deep in the heart of Texas. Today we've got a lesson video going. So excited. If you're new here, we have a little guitar shop. My wife and I, Ryan and Angela, we own a little music lesson studio in a very small town in East Texas. We spend our days keeping the music alive by teaching people music, guitar, drums, bass, piano, vocal lessons, ukulele, all of that good stuff. And what I thought I would do for this video is um, I have a student who's working on this song and I was like, yeah, I'll teach it to you, no problem. We'll work on it. And I was looking around trying to check it out online and I noticed there were no tutorials that I could find for this song. And uh, I thought, well, she's uh, working on it and I was going to film her some short little snippet videos to let her have so she could kind of dissect and really watch the strumming patterns and that kind of thing. So she could work on that at home. But I thought, why not just shoot a stinking tutorial video and then I could just send her the link. And then of course anybody else who's out working on this song, hopefully you guys and girls will get something from this as well. So here we go, let's do this. All right, so the song today is called Curses by The Crane Wives. Now my wife has taught uh, several of the songs from this band to her vocal students. So I've heard, actually heard several of this band's songs. But one of Angela's, my wife's uh, vocal students is also taking guitar lessons from me. And so she wanted to learn the song as well on guitar because she's learning to sing it. I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll totally work on it. Now there's a couple of interesting things about this song. And there's a couple of things I really like about this band. If you've not heard the Crane Wives, the Crane Wives, you should go check them out. They're a very uh, Americana folk band, I guess. I was trying to figure out what genre they were, but I guess they're classified as folk Americana. There's uh, two young ladies and two dudes and it's mostly acoustic driven. Sometimes they have an acoustic electric guitar in there, but it's very cool. It's very, it's very catchy. It gets stuck in your head and I, and I like this song. So first thing let's do, we're going to cover the chords first and then I'm going to break down some strumming pattern tips for you guys and girls and circles. All right. So what I love about this is we've got some bar chords up in this joint, right? We got a B minor bar chord to an F sharp major. Just sounds so good. I believe we're in B minor here. Goes to an E minor. So you gotta know E minor. We got a D, a D sus4. There's a real quick D to a D sus4. Back to D chord, and then we're back to uh, F sharp major, B minor. Right, there's also a sneaky G major chord that creeps in a little bit later in the song. But the, the bulk of the song is B minor, F sharp major, E minor, D major, to a D sus4, back to D, to a, you know, F sharp major, B minor. So those are the chords you kind of want to get a handle on if you're unfamiliar with them. I'll try to put some little diagrams up there, but you know, quick Google search, you can find a diagram for these chords. Now, I love the fact that I found a couple of videos of this band playing, a couple of like live, like at a party somewhere, and they're playing it. And these girls, man, the, the two guitar players are girls. Dude on bass, dude on drums. And they are getting it, man. And they did not... <laughs> They didn't cheat. They are not avoiding the bar chords. A lot of guitar players avoid the bar chords and they'll get a capo and play you know, G, C, D, E minor, A minor. They'll capo that sucker and put it in a key of G, which is minimal bar chords. You can get all the good chords with no bar chords in the key of G. Um, so they could have capoed and, and done some things to make it easier on themselves. They did not. They're right in it. I love, I love that they did not shy away from that. And so for my young lady uh, guitar student, I'm like, hey, these girls are doing their bar chords. You can do your bar chords too. Let's get to it. So uh, B minor, F sharp major. The nice thing about that, it's, the, it's essentially the same grip. This five string B minor shape is really the exact same grip shape that you use. You just shift over to your sixth string root F sharp. 
take the same shape and shift that shape over. Now, what we've been working on is that change, right? Because the rest of the chords are not that bad. But that B minor to the F sharp major. B minor, F sharp major. That is the real kind of challenge, I guess. And this is the sticking point for my student. Sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable on Angela's chair in here. Her chair is different than my chair. Um, so what you might have to do is just practice E minor, F sharp major. E minor, F sharp major. B minor, F sharp major. You may have to practice that. Just getting used to moving that hand, right? And try not to like move one finger, move one finger. Think about moving the entire grip in one quick, one quick shape, right? Okay, so that is the intro. Uh, the intro of the song and the verse is that part. So let me play a little bit of it for you. I'll play it and then I'll break it down kind of what I'm doing. So here we go. sort of this boom chick, the boom chick pattern, where you got kind of picking the low note of the chord. In this case, I'm picking that second fret on the A string, which is your B, the root of your B minor chord. So it's like a pick, pick, a pick, and then a baby string. And it does that twice. So I go. Now you notice I'm, I'm muting those things too. So I've got a quirrell quick strum. And then with the side of my hand, I'm muting. I'm not doing that. Go ahead. So there's a there's a bit of right hand muting on these strings. And some chucks. Some chuckas. Alright. Anyways. So we gotta pick strum, pick strum. Then we go to the F sharp major, where we're again picking that root chord, that, that root note, and I'm doing it down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. To the E minor, uh, so two bars or one measure, however you want to count it, whether you're counting uh, a fast four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. You could do a, it, could be a fast four, one, two, three, four, one, two, or one, and two, and three, and four, and so whatever you're, whichever way you count it, it's twice as long on the E minor chord. I'm using the same strum pattern that I did on the B minor to the F sharp major. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. I'm gonna get to the E minor chord. And again, picking the low note and then strumming the high strings. We get to the D chord, D major. Give it a D. I think I'm, I think that's how I'm playing it. Let me play through it. I think I'm doing down on the D. Add your pinky in to the sus four. D sus4, D sus4, D. Down, 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 up. 
back to the F sharp major. With that same down, down, up, up, down. Then it goes back to this. Kind of wraps it up. So, again, intro, verse. So a great reason to practice your bar chords. Learning bar chords kind of sucks, and all of my students hate bar chords. But if you find a song that you really love and you just don't get tired of it, and it contains bar chords, that's a good reason to practice your stinking bar chords. All right, let's take a look at the pre-chorus now, which is where the G chord finally comes in. All right, so when we get to the pre-chorus, we got our B minor. Goes to G, now you can go cowboy chord G this if you want to, or you could you could bar chord, you could bar chord G that, because you're about to go to that F sharp major bar chord. So whatever you want to do. I have to go watch the video again to see what these uh, these uh, ladies are doing. The chord changes aren't as fast on the pre-chorus, so they're a little bit longer drawn out chords, but it kind of goes like this. Four counts, one and two and three and four. F sharp major, they do this cool little. <laughs> they do a hit and it pauses. I love that, it's awesome. Then back to G. And then walls start burning down. They skip that D chord the second time for the pre chorus and they go right to the F sharp major and it's like a double long F sharp major. back to basically intro, verse two, pre-chorus, you know, B minor, G, D, F sharp, then B minor, this house don't feel like home. Oh, chorus, we gotta get to the chorus. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. So we finally get to the chorus. What is it? I'm looking at my notes here. Intro, verse one, pre-chorus, interlude, verse two, pre-chorus, chorus. Don't bore us, get to the chorus. Okay, chorus is a little bit different. Uh, similar, obviously, still the same. B minor, G, D, F sharp. Uh, let's talk about the timing of it. So it's like B minor, one, two, So we got basically four counts of B minor, and by four, I'm doing like one and two and three and four and four complete beats of B minor, four of G, one and two and three and four and two of D, one and two and F sharp major, three and four and B minor, one and two and F sharp minor, uh, F sharp major, three and four and four beats of B minor, one and two and Four G, one and two and three and four. D for two, one and two and F sharp major, two beats, and then B minor for four beats. So I think it's helpful. I make myself notes sometimes. You can find chord sheets for this. There's chord sheets out there that are quite. I mean, you can find a great chord listing for this. Uh, problem with chord sheets, lead sheets, is unless you know the song really, really well, 
And a lot of times as a beginner player, you're just struggling to get the stupid chord shapes and make your hand, <laughs> your hands do what you want. So like knowing how many counts, how many beats, um, do you play this B minor before it goes to the G? You're just supposed to feel it or what? Well, that's why we count to four, right? So I like to come in and make just little hashtag, little notes, like four beats, four counts for the D, four counts for G. So there's the chorus, goes back to the interlude. Verse three, pre-chorus again, chorus, ashes, ashes, dusty, dust, uh, and kind of like a double chorus, which is very common, very common. Outro. <laughs> So that's the base mechanics of it. Where my student was struggling really was, she was, you know, like all of us in the beginning, getting used to bar chords, being able to change bar chords smoothly. So, you know, she, she had a week of just practice changing from the B minor to the F sharp major. You gotta do that. I mean, you gotta practice that before you can play the whole stinking song. And as she's getting your handle on that, the next part was a strum pattern that's pretty dang close to what the Korean Wilds are doing. The strum pattern I'm doing is kind of my interpretation of what I'm hearing or watching a video of them doing it, you know. It's an approximation of what gets the vibe. Very common technique to like pick the low note of a chord and then strum. We call those boom chicks. Boom chicka would be the. That's more of a country thing, but it can be a folky in there. Anyways, so this was uh, a quick, maybe not even quick. This is just supposed to be a simplified resource for me to give my student who's been working on the song. I hope you guys and girls out there in the YouTube land uh, found some value in this. I had to go back real quick and listen to the song. It's like, wait, how's the chorus go? I forgot how it goes. Because again, I'm not a Crane Wives aficionado. Uh, one of the things I love about teaching music though is I have students come in like, hey, can you show me this song? I'm like, yeah, let's figure it out. I've never heard of this. And they're like, oh, cool. <laughs> so I get introduced to new music pretty regularly through my students. And uh, a lot of the times it's stuff that I wouldn't naturally find on my own, probably. Um, I tend to be more of a rock and roll guy. Um, but I do love some great Americana, folky stuff. I, I actually kind of really appreciate older classic country nowadays, uh, having had to teach quite a bit of country songs to some students. So... I just thought, let's do a little, let's do a little lesson video for curses. Curses by the Crane Wives. Uh, now again, you can get a capo and you can do some things to make it easier on yourself. However, if you go watch some videos of them playing it live, they are not capoing this bad boy or bad girl or bad thing. They are straight up bar chord city. And there's only two bar chords, y'all. Two dang bar chords. The rest are the rest are open chords. You know? So find a reason to practice your bar chords. You will be a better guitar player in the long run if you just knuckle down and do it. That's what I had to do as a young player. I had to knuckle down, and just had to learn some songs that had bar chords, and it forced me to do it. So. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If uh, you're a regular viewer here, you'll go like, what the heck is Ryan doing? <laughs> well, I'm thinking about doing a video series of songs that I'm helping to teach my students uh, to create resources for them. Again, a lot of times I'll just shoot a quick video with my phone uh, of a strum pattern or something. You know, if they, if we've got it tabbed out or on paper, but sometimes people learn better with a visual and they can hear it. So a lot of times, Pretty much all the time I'm doing a real quick quick little video 
and I'll, you know, message it to them or email it to them or, or send it to their mom or whatever. Like here's, Hey, here's the strum pattern that they're working on for the song that they're struggling with. So they can, they can see it as a resource. But I thought, why not do that here on YouTube, on the RA music channel. So you may start to see more of these pop up little songs. I'm helping teach other people. Uh, if they're a part they're struggling with, I might make a video about it. You guys and girls, hopefully you get some help out of it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you appreciate it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in supporting our little bitty mom and pop business in small town East Texas, there's a link down in the description. You can go buy a t-shirt, get some RNA music swaggity swag, and help us keep the music alive for the next generation in our small town teaching. And uh, if you have some questions, comments, please leave it down below. It's been a while since I've done like a, a lesson style video. So I'm a little rusty on that. So I apologize. But uh, we'll see how that goes. If I can do more lessons, I'm sure they'll get better. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all. Uh, please subscribe. All that good stuff. And we'll see you the next time. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. We need the music. We need to keep it alive for the next generation of young musicians who, they're out there. There is future in music. See you guys next time. Stupid catchy song, I can't get it out of my brain.